Hello everybody, I'm Dracona, and today I want to talk about toxic masculinity. Now, this topic has already been covered uh, pretty much perfectly by Chris Raygun, and you can check that out here. But I wanted to add my own short points, uh, including some examples from movies, because I have way more movies than games. Now, the clips I'm about to show you uh, which were also in Chris Reagan's video, are from a film called The Mask You Live In. It's by The Representation Project. I'll put the link for their website below, just in case you're curious. Now, the first point I want to make is that pointing out legitimate problems with our culture is a good thing to do. That's good. If there are problems, point them out. However, overgeneralization is bad. The predominant male archetypes that we see in film and television and other forms of popular culture are the strong, silent guy who is always in control and is not emotional. And then we have the superhero character, the hero character, engaging in high levels of violence in order to maintain that control, in order to achieve whatever goal he has in front of him. Uh, yeah. Because... All characters in movies, especially superheroes, are always in control. Nothing ever goes wrong. There's never any conflict. Also, I love how you're showing Iron Man and Thor and Captain America and Superman. I love how you're showing all these superheroes, and yet, I mean, maybe not necessarily in Superman, but especially in Marvel movies, you're not addressing the fact that these characters aren't just violent and destructive they're funny they may not be the most complex characters but they're actually funny but no let's just focus on the fact that they're superheroes therefore they have to be super therefore they have to be strong and they have to save the day you know because otherwise it wouldn't be a fucking movie we also have the archetype of the thug, and this is predominantly men of color who are pigeonholed into much more violent roles. And then we have the man-child or the mook, which is the male who's in perpetual adolescence. His body doesn't typically have a lot of muscle, but he tends to project masculinity in other ways through the degradation of women, engaging in high-risk activities. All they want to do is get laid. And of course, at the end, nobody gets anything because they get drunk, they take drugs. And there have been a whole rash of these movies recently that are funny. And so you're laughing at what you could become. Violent video games reinforce the stereotypical structures of what a man should be. The typical game character tend to be white males with, it gets this specific brunette hair, five o'clock shadow, when an emotion sneaks in for a male character, by and large, it is anger. And any sort of grief is very, very underplayed and never actually discussed or processed. I'm not coming with you this time. What? Most of me is down there. I only held enough back to get you off the ship. No, that's not, we go together. It's already done. I am not leaving you here. John. I've waited so long to do that. It was my job to take care of you. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. Cortana, please. Wait. Welcome home, John. The existence of one exception makes a generalization flawed. Also, unless you possess all knowledge of everything in the universe, you can't predict the existence or non-existence of an exception. In other words, 
it's not wise to make overgeneralizations. Now, this isn't that bad. She says typical game characters. She doesn't suggest all. But this whole thing is framed to imply that it's the overwhelming majority, that this doesn't just represent a small problem. These kind of arguments and pieces are directly tied to plenty of others that just make broad, sweeping generalizations about video games, about movies, about media in general. You know, it's not just this game or that game, it's video games. That in itself not only glazes over all the examples to the contrary, but it contributes to an inflated negative image which demonizes entire industries and their patrons. If anything, the strict expectations of men to be manly comes from advertising more than anything else. Movies, games, and even music are promoting, and have been promoting, that men can be emotional. They can be themselves without holding everything in. They can be funny without being stupid. They can be emotional without being looked down on. And they can be strong without being dominating. So, for people who say that toxic masculinity is rampant, and there are no complex, emotional, or positive male heroes in movies, games, or television, or at least not a large amount, I have only one thing to say. <gasps> Fuck!